If we were to take one of your long bones and slice like the femur and slice it into a frontal section, which is what you see here, separating the anterior and posterior portions of the bone, we would see something like this picture. And as you can see, the bone is not a complete solid mass. In fact, a majority of the bone is made up of a porous type of bone called spongy bone, which can take twisting, pulling, pushing from all different directions. Spongy bone is supported or surrounded by a denser form of bone called compact bone. The compact bone is only along the superficial faces of the bone, giving it strength only in certain directions. Sometimes this can be called a bone collar because the compact bone, much like the collar of a shirt, surrounds the entire bone and gives it structure and support to maintain its shape. Many of the flat bones in your body are composed of a structure called diploe. Specifically, this word refers to spongy bone that is trapped between two layers of compact bone. So here's two layers of compact bone and spongy bone trapped between it. This is common to the flat bones like those in your skull. For flat bones, this diploe structure, which is kind of like a spongy bone sandwich, <laughs> it creates incredible strength, which you, you, I mean, you would want that for the bones that protect your brain. Your skeleton is comprised mostly of spongy bone, not compact. If your skeleton were composed of compact bone, it would weigh too much for your muscles and they would not be strong enough to help you move your bones. Uh, therefore, spongy bones or spongy bones serves to lighten the skeleton while still providing strength and support. Much like the supports of a bridge that span a river, spongy bone has these things that are called trabeculae. And let's just draw a little car on this bridge so you remember that it's a bridge. Um, but trabeculae are like trusses or support, and they're very similar to these structural trusses that support bridges. Trabeculae are they're, they're curving structures of sheets and layers of bone called lamella or lamellae. Because trabeculae are found in spongy bone in, in almost infinite orientations, right? Some of them you see are going this way, some are going this way, some are going this way, some are going that way. They're all, all going in infinite different directions. And this is what allows spongy bone to take stress from all directions, making it kind of superior to compact bone, which is only, compact bone is only able to withstand force in one or, or very few if more than one directions. As we just learned, layers of bone or sheets of bone, I, we're talking about compact bone here. So layers or sheets of compact bone are called lamellae, plural, or lamella, singular. This becomes confusing because there are many different types of lamellae that create the overall structure of compact bone tissue. This picture here is kind of like a pizza slice of bone. And you can see the spongy bone toward the center or deep part of the bone in the interior medullary cavity. Th this area here, this would be filled with marrow, right? Because that's the marrow cavity. Surrounding the entire bone are lamella that are called circumferential. Right, because the, circumfer the circumference of a circle is around the outside. Of this word circumferential, because it relates to the circumference, which is basically just that measurement of the outline of the bone or outline of the circle. As you can see, as you move from superficial to deep into the bone, you start to encounter these superior to inferior aligned pillars of lamella, right? These are little pillars, kind of like what you would see supporting a porch on a house. 
And these pillars are called osteons. These little pillars are what give compact bone its incredible ability to withstand gravitational forces and support the weight of your fleshy tissues onto a bone such as this, the femur here. Each osteon is surrounded by its own layers of bone. So each osteon also has layers of bone in it. And those layers are called concentric lamella. In between the osteons and the concentric lamella are what we call sometimes sheets of bone that are called interstitial lamella. So it's like filler, right? It's just like, ah, the circles are not coming together perfectly, right? So if these are osteons, then the interstitial lamella would kind of fill in these spaces here. I feel like interest, I feel like it, it is just, it is just filler. Um, it's like all the pillars were created around someone and someone said, hey, don't forget to fill in the spaces between them. I also want to let you know that um, pillars are, are, as I said, they're very strong in taking force from an up down direction, kind of like I have here in the femur. But if you were to put some force perpendicular to these pillars, they would collapse quite easily. 